Hi, and we're back. So this is going to be the last notebook in the methods section. And it's not really about methods, to be honest. It's really just about telling you that there's really easy ways to interface between other languages and Julia. And the reason I put it here is because if you want to start your next data science project and you already have a lot of code in another language, uh, this should not stop you. There's pretty easy ways to call your functions that if you don't want to rewrite them into Julia, uh, there are pretty easy ways to actually call them from Julia. So we covered three here, Python, R, and C, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, so I do have references at the end um, if you want to do C++. Uh, so one quick way to do Python is using the PyCall package. I'm pretty sure we've actually used PyCall earlier in this tutorial by importing, like I think we've imported NumPy in one of the notebooks earlier. So here we're importing um, math, so Py import math. As long as you have the Python package installed on your laptop, uh, this should be fine. Uh, so that's one way to do Py imports. Another way is if you want to write your own Python code, you can just do Py and then three quotation marks and then write whatever Python code inside. And then um, that's just going to work just fine. So if you have a Python um, code here, um, we've already, we're running it from here. So um, Python is actually running in, um, in reality. So, and then finally, one quick way you can do this as well, if you have, like, if you've written this exact same code uh, just in a python.py uh, file, uh, so what you can do is just import, py import what you have there. And once you've imported it, you basically have a new variable uh, that you can uh, just, if the function name is find best fit Python, uh, you can just call um, the file, the variable name you've named it, and then dot whatever function name you actually uh, did call in that file. So that should be another pretty straightforward way to do it. Uh, R code. So for R, um, the package you want to use is R call. And R call is actually pretty cool. It, it, like I'll switch to the terminal here for just a second. Because like if you're on Julia and you are using, using R call, uh, you can just hit the question mark and then you have like you're now in, in an R interface like it's as if you are in R uh, so that's pretty cool another way you can do R is uh, by using the R call function like this is calling R's sum not Julia's sum and you're passing it on um, the input values um, R of 1 like here if you call R of 1 that's like that's a Julia variable now um, so type of you can just run Julia functions on it. Uh, so that's a Julia um, variable v value here. There's R put and R get to get like put and get things from R uh, to Julia. So here Z is equal to one R put of Z. You just, or R put macro Z, you're just gonna put Z in uh, the context of R. And you can now run just R code by writing R and then running whatever, or writing whatever R code inside. Uh, now it's going to recognize what Z is because Z is um, known within the R context here. We just put it there. Uh, if we do like something else, it's not going to know, right? Because we don't know what W is. All right. So um, yeah, R of one can get it back. We're generating uh, random numbers in a normal distribution, ran n 10 numbers. Uh, we are going to do R import. We can import a library here um, and do... Um, yeah, so base, we're importing R's base as R base. So that's like, we can now just call any function instead of doing this type of format, we can just do dot sum here. Um, our library boot, we can just import the library. And we can just here, um, since we have, um, let's see. Um, yeah, so here what's going on is that we're testing um, the X value. So X is this random a normal distribution uh, vector we've just created here. So we're material, materializing like dollar $x what it is in actual value. We're passing it to t.test. That's just like we're writing our code here. Uh, and um, it's actually going to turn out to be um, somewhere. Where is it? Um, hmm. uh, I'll turn to it. So yeah, so, so the hypothesis was true um, that it is. Um, normal. Uh, so yeah, I think if I run the same thing here with hypothesis tests, we're going to see that it's also going to be the same hypothesis. 
yeah, so here, here the way it's doing it in hypothesis is that it fails to reject H0, so it accepts it, and true is here. So, um, yeah, and I think, yeah, other things you want to compare are like uh, the mean values, and yeah, so this is the mean value, uh, mean of x, and so on and so forth. All right, so moving on for the C code, uh, also like a quick way you can do it is just calling the C call function. Uh, here, if you're using like a standard library, like just like a function from C itself, um, this is uh, fine. You can just call the function itself. Uh, if you're calling your own uh, function, one way to do it is to uh, run your own, like create your own dynamic library based on um, your um, code that you've written. Um, I know this might go over your head if you haven't done this ever before. Um, I do have a tutorial here under this link to tell you how to make, like how to create a make file uh, to run your C code and automatically generate a dynamic library or shared object uh, file. And usually the syntax goes something like this. This is where uh, the dynamic library is. Uh, this is what the function you want to call is. And then the input type the output type, and then the actual input uh, value that you're passing. Uh, so that's usually what the syntax is going to look like. And there's more detail here if you want to learn how to wrap your C code into Julia. And then, yeah, that's that's about it for this notebook. It was a quick one, uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's really. I just I just wanted to tell you that calling other functions or other languages from Julia is pretty straightforward. And thank you for watching. One more notebook, and we'll have to say goodbye. <laughs>